Can you guys hear me? I was wondering if you could set the audio for musicians on. The So the original audio so that I can get crosstalk and stuff because it, otherwise it often mutes it out. I don't know if we already did this. I haven't unmuted the um, owl yet, so now it's unmuted. So, but like, yeah, is it possible to turn on the original sound for musicians on, on Zoom so that it doesn't try to filter out noise? Oh. It's under mute, uh, it's uh, under the microphone and audio settings. Okay, then what's that? Yo, what are we changing on there? Uh, on it's, it's under, yeah, good. It's under advanced bank. Oh, no. So, audio profile, it's um, you said original sound for musicians. Uh, yeah, original sound for musicians. Yeah, okay. that we should that? select that. Yeah, because then it doesn't try to filter out background noise so that people talking just comes through interesting right now you're much clearer than you were earlier yeah i think that's a google me versus zoom thing oh maybe that's the case okay i wonder if there's a similar setting in google me yeah i don't i think that was a different problem i think that was a yeah some other feedback. okay all right i'm google me that's like far into okay 
I put in each of your folders um, a fall sports wrap up from. I I did the looks to me like original sound was on. From there, maybe it's just on my computer. Yeah, I I selected it, and then it says original sound for the musician. It says you're not a musician. You're not allowed to. Do I need to sing at the computer? If if it says off in the top left corner on mine, I just click it and it turns it on now. But I don't know if that's the same. So it, it's about whatever machine has the microphone on it, not so whoever's running the app. Top left of your L screen, of your Zoom screen. <laughs> what does it say? It's really, yeah, so that's the one that we need to have the. Uh, Is it not showing it? I. Why? If you saw how many uh, the words are on the page, right. it, it's impossible to see. But um, in the top corner, yeah, on mine, Jason, it's right here. I look back so that you can see it on that one. Like, there I say, slave labor has a purpose. Slave labor has a purpose. Yeah, I know. I I can't remember the date. Yeah, There's the email about changing negotiations since last night got canceled. Oh, did I not click the thing? Yeah, the 18th works for everyone so far. December 18th. Can you let me know if that works for you? Yes. Sorry. December, it's okay. December 18th. I think it was the 18th, 5 to 6 30. Yeah, but our meeting would be before a little bit, like. Thursday, 4 45. Monday. Yeah. The, the, the starting time was. Five for the negotiation, but a little before just Oh, so the same as same as same. Yeah, that's fine. Beforehand. Should I respond? Okay. Or do you, is this sufficient? No, that's sufficient. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So we're recording. We can go ahead and get started. Ready to start. All right, we'll go ahead and call the meeting to order. Will all who uh, wish join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. No suggested agenda adjustments from Meredith or I. Does anybody else have an agenda adjustment? Seeing none, we'll go to the minutes. I would make a motion to approve the minutes of November 14th as presented. Is there a second? I will second. Any discussion or corrections? I've got one correction uh, on page two um, under reports, the high school report. Um, so number two under the high school report, um, Case Walston is spelled with a K, not a C. Okay, anything else? So with that correction, we'll go ahead and vote. Uh, we need, need, do need to vote by roll call today. So, um, Noah? Aye. Jake? Aye. Kevin? Aye. Mark? Aye. Also vote aye. Passes 5-0. Uh, next up, we have approval of warrants. I would make a motion to approve regular warrant 10 and 11, payroll warrant 9A, 10 and 11, main first for October 23, and ban warrant, ban 20, uh, warrant number 46. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion or questions? We'll go ahead and vote. Noah? Aye. Jake? Aye. Kevin? Aye. Mark? Aye. I also vote aye. Passes 5-0. Um, 
Not seeing anybody who would public comment, but the floor is open for public comment. Seeing none, we'll go ahead and move on. Uh, acknowledgements. No, any acknowledgements? Okay, Jake? None right now. Um, I don't think I have any at the moment. Kevin? None right now, thanks. Mark? Um, I'm assuming, thank you. Students? Nothing that we don't cover in our report. Save it for the report. Okay, Meredith? Um, I think since we last met, we had the um, film musical. Um, the Mean Girl Show was since, I'm sorry, is that in your no. um, uh So they had a great um, run of shows and I want to congratulate the cast and crew for um, the fun show that they put on, much enjoyed. And uh, additionally, since that time we've had some students um, get recognized for accolades and some different um, you know, activities, athletics, Ruth White, you know, has another accolade to add to the list. Uh, congratulate, congratulations to her. Um, this weekend we had some athletes honored at their all conference, all regional um, award award banquets. In um, particular, at the uh, football banquet, two of our athletes were chosen for district um, player of the year awards for the region, which is a high honor. Jack Brewer for the LTC player of the year and Brady Grant for the Defensive Player of the Year. So congratulations to all of the students who are shining bright on whatever stage they're on. Great, thank you. Next up, we have reports. Lisa, you want to start? Sure. Um, at a recent director's meeting, one of the topics of conversation uh, that came from Brady Board was that they were informed that uh, we have 400 multi-language learners individuals that would be moving to the Bangor area soon. That's kind of the projection as you know, folks are coming into the state. So that, that doesn't mean just Bangor, but all the surrounding towns. And so conversations uh, were going around as far as supporting the needs of these students and um, screening and evaluating. And I, I feel really good that we have, we have the tools necessary to, to evaluate these kids. Um, Year to year changes for us all the time, you know, as far as numbers go. But, but I thought that would be uh, good information to have on our radar. Um, another thing that came up that is something to think about how it might impact the future or budgeting in the future. Not so much for the next school year, but the one after that. CBS referrals for three-year-olds have increased pretty significantly, and the severely medically compromised. Looking at students that need one-to-one -one nursing. Currently in our area of CDS, they're at um, 20, and there's 30 more referrals in the queue. So that's going to have a, a significant impact as we make a plan for, for that school year. So definitely keep an eye on what that's looking like. Uh, we talked about percentages earlier. RSU, as far as special education, we've got 27% of our entire population that is Identify the state average right now is 30%. Everything it's it's on the climb everywhere. Our surprise Bangor is at 36%. That's that's pretty high. Um, but we're reading we're reading the needs of our students. Um, I think we're doing we're doing well. Uh, Special Olympics has been going on now for for a couple of years. They've been pretty active. Uh, students have participated in bowling and soccer. They're gearing up for basketball, including unified basketball, and, and I know that we've had that at OMS and OHS in the past, and that's that's always super exciting and nice to have families come in and, and have uh, students participate uh, both as as uh, helpers and or supporters and as uh, as the athletes for Special Olympics. Uh, they participated. We had we had nine students in the regional bowling. Three of our students won first place in their division. Two others won second place. Three others winning third place for the division. Uh, one brought home fourth place for his division. Uh, one was selected <coughs> to read the Special Olympics pledge to the large group before the games began. So that was quite an honor, and they did it very well. Uh, three of our students attended the state games in Bangor. Uh, we, we've pretty much been sticking to the regional games because those are during the school day and that's when we can send staff and, and state games are usually outside of the school day. So usually 
uh, if that happens, we get a little bit of outside support from parents to do that. Our athletes came home with a first place and a second and a fourth. Uh, we had some students that are attending the Special Olympics Games in Bangor. Uh, again, receiving first, second, and fourth place. They've had a great season so far. The kids are excited. The parents are happy that, that it's an offering. Uh, we've looked at it, again, for, for younger grades, but just the logistics of, of having support uh, is, is something that we, um, we're holding off on that at this point in time. Uh, and in the spring, bocce and track events will be happening. Uh, hoping to do also unified events for the spring too, which will be fun for, for our athletes and, and their supporters. And I didn't note anything over here, but we're still uh, down staff, but I feel uh, fortunate that we're not down like um, other districts around us that are missing teachers and missing ed techs. We're down uh, re ed techs. Uh, the staff has been awesome about sharing and, and supporting each other, so I couldn't ask for, for more. We continue to meet, we continue to try to revamp how the supports are going to be uh, provided, you know, with, with the with fewer hands to. To provide those supports, but all in all, like you know, it's been a it's been a busy start, but definitely a positive start. Any questions? Same. I don't have a question. Just I just forwarded you an email uh, or a link, actually. Uh, I sent it to Meredith earlier today. You might have already seen this, but um, the College of Education and Human Development just announced a new graduate certificate for multi-language, multilingual. Special education, so um, it might be That's something. That's interesting. Yeah. It's a fit. It's, I don't know much about it other than it's a. It's a. Fit, I think it's 15 credit certificate. and It's fully online, so huh. maybe. So useful. it's not just an MLL. It's not a certification for that. It is five course of 15 credit multilingual special education graduate certificate. Hmm. Um, they actually announced three new certificate programs. One is an adaptive phys ed, and there's an outdoor leadership one, but that would seem to be the one that would be. Right, thank you. Yeah. And anything else? Um, I have one for Susan. She's, okay. She's been out unexpectedly, um, so she sent us uh, just some notes. Um, you may have seen that the, we sent an email today that the help uh, curriculum dessert and discuss we postponed. Um, until January 18th, um, and so we sent out that message today. Um, we also will keep the survey open. We've only gotten a little bit of response to the survey, so we hope to get more survey responses, <clears throat> responses as well. Um, the DEI leadership team meeting is meeting next week. Um, is it next week? The 11th. Monday. Um, and we'll be looking at the data that Brian referenced earlier um, and just more subcommittee information being shared and updates. Um, the early release day is also next week and we're gonna be um, having a DEI focus for that day. Um, and the focus is going to be looking at some of the data, but also um, piloting a rubric um, for you know, curriculum instructional, um, lens of examining DEI uh, in our um, curriculum and instructional materials. You know, as I, I think we've talked about, it's been hard to find the perfect tool that's out there. So the one of the committees, subcommittees, has been working on kind of pulling together the best of several tools into something that we want to pilot. So that's what the early release day will be focused on next week. Um, curriculum committees meeting next week and they're going to be looking at the generative AI guidelines and giving some feedback on that. Um, and then in January, the early release day, we'll have a carryover from that. We're going to be focusing on technology, um, uh, generative AI guidelines, and kind of beginning to um, work through some of the tech um, standard curriculum issues that we wanted to take back to the teachers to, to work further on. Um, and then soon after that, on the January 12th, we have a full day teacher workshop day. 
and that day we have um, a panel on uh, religious diversity, um, kind of uh, increasing everyone's understanding of um, different subgroups in our in our school community and things that we would need to know as educators to be responsive to students um, from different religious and spiritual traditions. Um, and also another uh, breakout will be for staff to have a se session with Cat Biddle on um, how we address student um, students who have come from um, low socioeconomic background and may have inequities that um, impact their ability to access education. So um, really a DEI focus for that day. And in addition to that, um, continuing our book studies that we started in the fall. And then some curriculum work. So a lot is happening over the next five weeks. That's five weeks. It's hard to believe all that's going to mm -hmm. go into five weeks. And we're going to have 11 days off school in between, too. So um, certainly busy time um, for the director of learning and all those responsibilities. Any questions or comments on that? Go ahead, move on to the student report. So for school culture, the class of 2024 is Portland Pie fundraiser is tonight until 9 p.m. Congratulations if you're Croy's on winning the Law Day essay contest. Congratulations to all those who won the raffle in the class of 2024 held right before Thanksgiving break. Thank you to all those who helped work with babysitting hosted by the class of 2024 on Sunday. And congratulations to Sophia Tatunic and Ellie Labrie, whose short stories were mentioned in Boston Globe Reviews. <laughs> For academics, the end of the semester is coming up fast, and grade checks are on December 11th. Spring early college applications are currently open. Happy Thesis Defense Day to everyone who had their jury dates for today, which will be deep. Uh, and the OHS Writing Center is officially open. As for activities, um, Acadia Hospital is holding a K-12 book drive. Donations will be accepted until January 30th. Best of luck to all those auditioning for show choir right now. Congratulations to all those completing their Joey's defenses today. Uh, winter concerts are next week, the 12th for the middle school and the 19th for the high school. The mental health committee meets tomorrow. Uh, the Save Promise Club is currently doing its 14 days of action. Asa show choir is about to begin. Information will come out before break. <coughs> and tomorrow, Asa is starting their um, push to winter break of uh, 12 days till winter break, 12 school days, um, with fun little themed days. Mm -hmm. And that's all for our report. Thank you. Any questions or comments? I'm so glad you mentioned the Phoebe's essay winning and Sophia and who was the other student? Oh, yeah. yes, they, those were so impressive to read. They were linked in, were they linked in the um, weekend preview or in the daily email? In the daily the right yeah, they, no. were not, they were not linked in the weekend. Yeah, it was been truly amazing. Yeah, they, they were really great. I actually wanted to read the Constitution. I'll read that. It was really great. Great. Uh, superintendent report. Um, so a couple of things in addition to what I have listed on the agenda. Um, I've been working with Mr. Archer on the request for information about volleyball. And um, we expect by probably January we'll have more information. We're in the process of doing some reaching out to area schools to try to find um, out if other districts have people interested in talking about a cooperative team. We found out that all the other area schools who have volleyball are full and are unwilling to take individual cooperative players because they're full. So um, Mr. Archer has done a survey with our student body. I think he sent that out last week. And then, um, did you not get that? I'm seeing puzzled faces. OK, I'll check that. I thought I saw it go out. But I'll check with him. Um, and uh, the other and area schools doing some um, s similar, asking them to do that if they're willing to uh, entertain that. 
also did the research into some startup costs. So that's being worked on. But I'll check on the survey because I thought it would come out. Um, the, Lynn and I have been working on the budget timeline for FY25. It's hard to say that out loud. That number just hits hits you because of, you know, 25 just feels later, like uh, like Space Odyssey later than 24. Um, Although Space Odyssey was 2010, right? 2010. That was 2001. 2001. Oh, 2001. Yeah, so we're well beyond. <laughs> There's both. There's both? Okay, yeah, maybe that's like why. 61 or something. Yeah. So when we've been looking at the, as we've been looking at the dates, um, <clears throat> there's a meeting in March that's typically a, um, we do a lot of talking about budget, that, that meeting, and I am, I am not able to attend that meeting. I'll be away. So I wanted to ask if the board um, would agree to move that meeting and we can go ahead and move it so it'll be on our timeline accurately. It's the meeting on March 26th and I'm proposing we move it to March 19th. Um, we, March 26th, we're still waiting on insurance. Sometimes that week we have the ceiling, but sometimes not. Um, but I just feel like it's a meeting I need, I really need to be here for regardless because um, we're kind of digging in and sometimes, you know, bringing back some information that's been requested. I mean, we can see when we get close to that time if we need that meeting or not, depending on what we have. We usually do. We usually find that we're using all of those meetings. So it would change from the 26th to the 19th. Um, and we can you know, vote on that later, but that's just the explanation for it. And I can put it on the next agenda if that makes sense to do that. Um, I wanted to give you um, some information about our, um, I've mentioned in, I think, a report earlier, the new reporting, anonymous reporting system we're putting into place. Um, I'm just going to share my screen so I can show you a couple things. been um, ramping up to this for what seems like a long time, but we had to wait in line for our turn to onboard into the Say Something system, and um, we're at the point now where we're, um, we are scheduled for a launch um, the end of January, and we're currently um, having our um, Team members, our school level teams and our district teams will be um, running the system and receiving all the tips, being uh, trained. They have, there's some training they have to go through. Um, and um, once we get through that, then we'll roll this out to students uh, and staff. Um, but I wanted to just give a little bit of information about the system um, so that you, you know, in case you have questions, you know what it is. I think I've mentioned before that this is um, a system that was that grew out of an organization called Sandy Hook Promise, which is a nonprofit that was started by families of um, some of the victims of the Sandy Hook school shooting that occurred, and um, they've developed um, several um, programs to um, try to prevent those types of tragedies from happening in schools. And one of them is this anonymous reporting system. And they provide a free of charge to any school that signs on and, and goes through their training process. Um, <clears throat> Brewer has had the system in place for about a year, or maybe a year and a half. We heard, I first heard of it from them, and they spoke very highly of it. Um, and, you know, we started looking around for systems like this and um, liked what we saw from the system. Uh, the one caveat is that we have to implement um, some student awareness activities through uh, what they call Safe Promise Clubs. Marissa and Dorsa mentioned that in their report. The high school club is the one that's gotten started um, first. 
and, and really it's um, awareness campaigns for students to be upstanders rather than bystanders, to you know, teach them what it means to, to be an upstander, to teach them you know, skills for being inclusive and welcoming with one another, which certainly there's a lot of tie over to our DEI work around safety and belonging for all individuals. So we just saw a lot of crossover into work happening in our schools um, with this initiative. So um, we have Safe Promise Clubs, you know, started in infancy in some schools and then actually starting with activities in other schools. So the reporting system that we're about to begin with, I'm just going to show you a few things and then show you a quick video. Um, they have a, a, a national call center that's um, staffed year-round, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, with uh, trained crisis counselors that um, are there to receive tips, assess tips, and then um, determine next steps that need to be taken with tips, whether it's passing it along directly to 911 dispatcher for our area, if it's you know uh, something that requires um, immediate attention, it might be to pass it along to our, t our school tip team um, for them to assess and to address. Um, it might be for them to actually, you know, if, if someone's calling something in that, and the person's in crisis that's calling, working with that student in crisis and getting them connected with someone who can help them. Um, and the tip management system now has three ways of reporting, either um, old-fashioned phone, or um, a website, uh, kind of, it'll, there'll be a button on our website that someone can uh, be directed to the TIP system or through an app. And those are all things that we'll talk with students and staff about how to access that um, when, as we train them. Um, the um, onboarding has been very well organized and very, uh, we have a specific point person that we've been working with through the onboarding process and it's helping us get to the point of being able to ramp up to implementation um, you know one of the things that we know about the system and we anticipated it and brewer confirmed it is when you first implement the system you have kind of a flurry you know a, a high volume usage um, and then that stabilizes a bit over time um, and so you know we're that's part of our onboarding process to try to teach the school community about you know the kinds of things that that this system can be used for and should be used for and um, try to also impress the importance of you know calling in legitimate tips and not prank tips and things like that so there's there's some of that 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 we anticipate we'll have to work through as we implement um, and you know we have school-based teams in every school that consist of the administrators the school counselors our social workers are part of the teams. There's a district level team that involves myself, um, Lisa, <clears throat> the SRO, Jason, kind of that district level support for the whole process. Um, and so it's a pretty, you know, well um, structured program. They also offer other trainings that we can use around, um, you know, the CASEL standards and mental health and well being and school safety. Um, so I think this aligns well with some of our other initiatives that we're working on, um, not just DEI, but also our well-being work group, potentially. So I just wanted to show this video that kind of gives a little bit of a, um, you know, different overview than what I just gave verbally. Um, and this is the kind of thing that I think we um, will be talking as a team about not just students and staff, but also parents. Like, what do parents need to know about the system and sending information out to them as well? Because parents can also submit tips to the system um, if, that, if that's the way they're most comfortable sharing information like this. Okay, I have to, I think I have to um, Pretty sure. take over the audio output. Don't I? You can probably unmute as long oh, as it maybe breaks I quiet. Maybe you, right. It might. Let's see if I unmute.
Okay, I should have tested that. <laughs> so I, I think Rachel. I think that's just going to be too complicated. I mean, I can send Rachel the link. Maybe I should just do that. Yeah. In the chat. I'll just send you the link in the chat. Your screen. I do. Go down just a little bit. Yeah, there it is. Are you re is that what you're doing? There's a checkbox that has to be clicked. The share video and share sound. Okay, hold on. It's not default. <laughs> Like a lower Here comes your small screen again. It is, it's like a millimeter big. <laughs> we okay. could just all follow the link. Yeah. Tonight. So, you know, if you have the, the video, I can send it out to you. Um, it's just individuals mainly who've implemented this in schools talking about how it's worked and how it's made a difference to make kids more safe and save lives in their districts. Sounds like a fine idea. Yeah. I mean, I, I think, you know, this is the kind of, I think it's, we get a lot of information um, around, you know, students in crisis and potential threats. I think because we are a small school community that, um, you know, kids talk to one another and then word gets back to us pretty quickly on things. But there are things that I know we don't, we don't find out because, um, you know, all kinds of reasons. Um, so I, I think this can definitely um, help us serve our students better and um, keep our, our school safe. So I just wanted you to have this information and um, as we roll this out, you'll see this coming, you know, like in newsletters and maybe hear your students talking about it um, in the coming months. It'll be January before we start training students toward the end of January when we're ramping up to implementation. And the program goes from fourth grade up they haven't found that it, it um, third grade and below, they just feel like it's not age appropriate yet for those individuals. Um, so that's the grade levels that um, we'll be implementing this program. Do you have any questions? Any questions or comments? I mean, I'd just say I appreciate that when you guys go out to address something, seen a lot of the dis districts just kind of checklist something. I, I'm thinking back to DEI, there were so many districts that just kind of checklisted DEI and you guys, I think uh, Meredith and Meredith found uh, Minnesota, the Minnesota uh, Alliance, which really took us at a deeper level. And I, I kind of feel like the same thing here. I think so many districts are spending money and trying to say they're doing something. And this seems like a much more kind of deeper and integrated and thorough and well thought out program. So I, I appreciate the selection that the thought process is going into these kinds of things. Thank you. Yeah, we feel like this is going to be a, you know, the, the fact that they have the student education piece with it, I think is so important. And um, there's a lot of student leadership that's going into that. You know, I, some of the ambassadors and the yellow tul tulip students at the high school are the ones implementing the activities that Marissa and Dorsa mentioned, so I think it's a really well conceived program. That's all I have for my report. Okay, anything else? <coughs> no discussion items? Uh, staff nominations, I make a motion to approve the slate of co-curriculars as presented. Is there a second? Second. So, uh, only one tonight, drama, one act play. Rachel, um, <laughs> thank you. Uh, <coughs> Any discussions or questions? Are we ready to vote? We'll go ahead and vote. Noah? Aye. Jake? Aye. Kevin? Aye. Mark? Aye. Also vote aye. Passes 5 0. Next up, we have the minimum wage MOU. So, this is a modification of the EPS contract. Uh,
to raise several wages as you see presented uh, to make sure we're in compliance with the main state law. Anything else to add to that, Meredith? No. Um, you know, it's every January right now we're having to take a look, and um, so this will take effect until the end of the year when we get the ES new ESP contract in place. When we will certainly make sure we're above this at that point. Right. This is the one being currently negotiated, so we hope this is not a continuing process. Yep. So this would take place or take effect January one. Yep. Can I ask a subtle question on it? Is um, refresh my memory on the minimum wage law. Is it now just like we've reached the the three steps, and now it's tied to inflation? Yes. There's a, yeah, there's that's a why calculation done every year that it has to be X percentage so above. Okay, I would make a motion to approve the MOU amending the wage scale found in the EPS contract for RSV 26. Is there a second? I second. Any discussion or questions? Go ahead and vote. Noah? Aye. Jake? Aye. Kevin? Aye. Mark? Aye. Also vote aye. Passes 5 0. In appreciation to Shana Goodall for helping put together the MOU and figuring out the wage changes. And I, I have one for you to sign. Okay. You have yours? Yeah, I have one well, let's too. have you sign two. I have one as well. Okay. I'll, I'll make sure to sign two before uh, I leave tonight. Okay. Next up is a, uh, a budget adjustment for the audit. Um, you may recall that we have a contingency fund we, which we put all in special, uh, sorry, regular education, which we do. We have a separate contingency fund in special education that rarely gets moved out elsewhere. but. Uh, we put all of our contingency funds in regular education for legal reasons. We can move up to 5% of a cost center, and that's our biggest cost center, so it gives us the most flexibility to put the contingency there. But every December, as they go through the audit, these are extremely small deviations compared to what we've seen some years, but there are some small adjustments. And from the auditor's point of view, they want a board approval for any deviations from the budget uh, that occurred over the previous year. So this is FY23. So I would make a motion to approve the allowable budget transfers between cost centers recommended by the auditor to remove the over expenditures in the cost centers, specifically decrease regular instruction by 36,937, increase system administration by 36,412, increase facilities maintenance by $425, and increase debt service by $100. Is there a second? Second. Any questions or discussions? We'll go ahead and vote. Noah? Aye. Jake? Aye. Kevin? Aye. Mark? Aye. I also vote aye. Carries 5 0. Uh, <clears throat> moving right along tonight. So, subcommittee reports. Policy subcommittee is meeting Thursday. We have a policy on field trips and water. We have a policy which I need to get to work on. I, I owe a deliverable on that. A uh, policy on um, naming facilities and the policy committee to give the board a chance to look at the um, uh, generative AI regulation. I don't think it's actually a policy, but uh, as you heard mentioned, it's also gonna go through curriculum committee. It's kind of an odd document because it's not exactly a policy, but it's more than something in a student or handbook or something that the board's not involved in. So we're doing a pretty wide consult, but a pretty quick implementation, and then that's already in the PD for January. Um, <clears throat> UTC. Meeting on Thursday. Spruce. We were supposed to have a meeting before, after our last meeting, but I, there was something with um, the directors weren't able to meet the morning out, right? Right. Have you heard? I think we didn't have a quorum that day. Okay. So I haven't heard on that meeting being rescheduled, so I'm assuming no, the directors. No, I think they said January. Okay. So we're on that. Curriculum subcommittee is a week from Thursday. I mentioned in Susan's notes what she said is happening there. Yep. Facilities and Building Committee. I don't think there's an update unless you have something. Um, Bill said by the end of the week, he's on remotely tonight, that the folks will be moving into the new spaces at ASA, which is exciting. And the um, project down in the central office is moving along. Uh, they said today in our meeting that actually they might be able to move the schedule up some, which I'm cautiously mm -hmm. optimistic mm -hmm. about. Um, and we've had the roof work finally started. You may have seen it out front here, and they were shoveling snow off the roof today <laughs> to continue their work. So um, apparently they work year round on roofs. So we're glad to have that work happening as well. That's good. Uh, anything on wellness, Noah? 
Yeah, um, we met and we did the uh, the triennial policy wellness assessment, um, and uh, we went through that and I noted that there were a number of things that weren't in our policy that were some of the newer things and some other pieces and some several things in our policy that aren't that are in our policy that aren't being followed that we might want to talk about at some point. Um, so that's, that's what we did. Good. Yeah, sounds like we should coordinate that if there's updates to policies that are needed. I mean, you, you and I should talk or you should send me an email or something. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Uh, the I leadership team is meeting on Monday. So the subcommittees have been meeting. I know the um, welcoming committee met last week, I think. And like I said, the data team met this morning. And um, We'll all the meet on. Teams been working on the rubric, so they've all been. Yeah, all the subcommittees have been working. We're just going to bring that back up to the leadership committee, and update each other, and then I think take a look at the first look at the DI survey. Um, strate strategic plan is meeting next week. And you guys are all involved in that. Um, the goal is to finish off the four core documents with um, mission and vision three core documents, mission and vision, and um, the vision of a student, and the district values uh, one. And so uh, hopefully that's the product that comes out of the December one, and then we'll see how much time we have. We'll start to turn the corner to thinking about goals that hopefully map back to uh, that document, those three documents. Uh, any other business? Any future agenda item requests? Any public comment? Our next board meeting is January 9th at 6 p.m. in the library and on Zoom. Any board requests for information and follow-up? I would motion to adjourn. Is there a second? I will second. Any discussion? Noah? Aye. Jake? Aye. Kevin? Aye. Mark? Aye. I also vote aye. Carries 5-0. Don't get used to that. We're heading into the budget season. That would be a record. <laughs> Might be. Oh, sure. Of course, we didn't have the data workshop. Right. Yeah. Not yeah. like it was a but, short night. Right. Still, even that considered. Yeah, so I was. I probably should have asked the prior to say any words you request. Uh, yeah, that's why I never answer the phone yet. Because I'm worried somebody will steal my voice and like.